Good afternoon. Today we'll be talking about the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90 triangles. Both of these topics will be covered in Ingenuity and in Odysseyware, um, although it, the problems that we'll be going over won't be from either uh, platform. You can use a concept in both platforms. The first thing we're going to be talking about is the 30, 60, 90 tri right triangles. Um, again, these triangles are right triangles, so you know that you'll have that little box in the, in the one corner to uh, identify that it is a right triangle. When we're looking at these, uh, at this section, we're looking for the length of the uh, sides of each of the triangles. We are not looking for the angle measurement since that's already been identified. That's how we know it's a 30, 60, 90 or a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. When we're looking at the different triangles, you'll see that we have uh, indicators to uh, help us identify which side we're talking about. Uh, when we're looking at the side that is opposite of a 30 degree angle, we identify this as the short side. It's going to be the, the smallest side of the triangle. With each of the, uh, the measurements, okay, um, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you're standing there at the corner where the two lines meet at the 30 degree triangle and you flip on a flashlight and the flashlight shines across on the opposite wall. That's the side that we're talking about when we're talking about the short side. It's, as you can see by the arrow there, it's, on the, it's pointing to the opposite side. Opposite of the 60 degree angle will be the long angle, or long side, sorry, long side, okay, because we're talking about the sides of the triangle. So we have a short side, we have a long side, and then we also have the hypotenuse. Okay, the hypotenuse will be the longest side of your right triangle. It's across from the 90 degree angle. The 90 degree angle is our largest angle in the triangle. So it's just an easy way for, for us to identify the different sides using the short, long, or hypotenuse. It, it can also help you visualize what it is that you're looking for. For this lesson, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label each of the sides as A, B, and C. We always use our variables X, Y, and Z. But I didn't want to be confused when we're talking about the sides of the triangle. So our short side will be identified as A, our long side will be identified as B, and again the hypotenuse will be C. And there's a relationship between each of them. Um, it's, it's what we're going to be calling our formula that we'll be using. Okay. Um, what we see here is that we have our short side, and the short side is going to be our key factor. That's going to be kind of where we start. Uh, when we look at the hypotenuse, we can see the hypotenuse is twice the length of the short side. And then the long side is the same as the short side, but you also have to multiply it by the square root of 3. So in, the, in an example, if I told you that the side A, our short side, if A was equal to 2, I know that what I could do is I could say, okay, that the uh, hypotenuse is going to be twice that, so basically, if it's my side A is 2, I'm going to double it, and that becomes 4. I know that my hypotenuse is going to be 4. Going on that same uh, notion, if I were to uh, say that my uh, short side is 2, I just need to multiply that by the square root of 3 to find my long side. So my, the, the length of my long side in this particular example would be 2 times the square root of 3. Now, for these problems, we don't put in... Um, the square root of 3 into a calculator. Okay, they want you to leave it with that radical sign. There's also things uh, that you'll see that they may give you the hypotenuse, and that's with that green arrow that you see coming down, because I've given you C, but you're going to have to find either the long side or the short side. You'll see that indefinitely in your Odysseyware problems. Now, again, it, it's not a hard uh, concept to, to follow. We just make sure we have to keep our work neat and, and clear. Um, in this case, we know that the hypotenuse is twice the short side. So in other words, if I'm giving you the hypotenuse, I know I need to divide it by 2 in order to find my, the, the length of my short side. My short side in this particular case would then be 5. Once I have my short side, it's very easy for me to find uh, my long side. All I do is plug that two or that five into that equation, and I know that my long side has become five times the square root of three. So there's not a whole lot of 
uh, arithmetic, shall I say, going in on this. Um, it, we, we do, uh, we will find some problems that are a little bit more complicated, um, and I'm going to address a few of them as, as we go along. Now, what I find is that really it's better to set up a table, okay, and I, I'm going to call it a formula table. Um, and the reason I say that is because, you know, trying to, you know, use this A, B, and C and figuring this stuff out, if you see it in a chart, it's going to be really easy to populate. So I'm going to just set it up. Remember, I have three different side lanes here. I have side A, side B, side C. Okay, they're, they're uh, set up by their angle measurement. So I know that A was going to be my 30, opposite my 30 degree angle. Uh, B was opposite my 60 degree angle and 90 was opposite my uh, C angle or, or side C. Again, I put the, the, the words in there, the short, the long, and the hypotenuse so you can see what it goes with and what it correlates to. And what I'm doing is I'm actually putting this formula in. Okay, It's the relationship between the different sides of the triangle. So remember, if I just say that my short side has a length of x, then I know that my uh, long side will be x times the square root of 3, and then my uh, hypotenuse will be double my short side, so it'll be 2x. Again, this is a chart. I'm trying to show you how we're coming up with this. So if I just kind of simplify my chart and I just put in, okay, my angle is a 30, 60, 90, and then I'm going to put in my formula. That's that second line there. You'll see that x, x times the square root of 3 and 2x. Once I have that, I can then go through and say, okay, for my first problem, they gave me uh, the short side of 2. In the second problem, they gave me that my hypotenuse was 10. So now I have my two different lines, and I can try and figure out what, what the other sides are just based on that one piece of information. For line 1, all I need to do is I need to substitute in 2 into any place I see x in my formula. So you see up in my formula, I have x, x times the square root of 3, and 2x. In line 1, you'll see my red there is showing you where I'm getting that 2 from. 2 is what was given to me. And I plugged in 2 into the 60-degree formula. So where you saw the x times the square root of 3 now becomes 2 times the square root of 3. And then in blue, where I have 2x for the um, hypotenuse, I substitute in that 2 for x, and I'll see 2 times 2 equals 4, so I know that my hypotenuse is 4. For the second line, I was given 10 as my hypotenuse. So now I have to go back and say, okay, now they're giving me that, my hypotenuse, I have to figure out what my value for x is. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at my formula, 2x, and I'm going to say that's going to equal 10. I'm setting up an equation. And then I'm going to solve for x. Divide both sides by 2, and I'll have x equal 5. Once I have my x value, I can easily plug it into my 60-degree uh, side or my long side, where I see the 5 I'm plugging into uh, for the value of x. I get 5 times the square root of 3. Now, I'm going to give you another problem that's going to, be a, it's going to be a little bit more work, and this is what I was talking about before. Everything else was, I was solving for x, and I'm still solving for x in this particular problem too, but I'm going to have to deal with a radical sign. Okay? So in this particular case, I know that my long side is going to be 6. Okay? So when I, when I know this information, I set up my table, and I put x into, or I put 6 into my 60 degree, my long column, okay? So x times the square root of 3 is going to equal 6. That's the equation I'm setting up. I have my formula there. Now what I need to do is I need to solve for x. And in order to do that, I need to divide both sides by the square root of 3. This allows me to get my x by itself. And then my fraction becomes 6 over the square root of 3. So now that I have a radical sign in my denominator, I, I can't stop here. We don't like to have radical signs in our denominator. And again, I'm not going to put this into my, um, into my uh, calculator in order to come up with a decimal. Okay, We're going to keep using our radical signs if we need to. 
So the way to get rid of the radical sign is I'm actually need to change the format of my fraction. I need to change, I'm going to multiply my fraction by one because I know if I multiply anything by one, it's going to stay the same, but my one's going to have a different look to it. Okay. It's still going to be one, but just going to look slightly different. My one is going to take the format of the square root of three over the square root of three. Again, when my numerator is the same as my denominator, that equals one. So when I say I'm multiplying my fraction here, six over the square root of three by one, I just change the format so that I can get rid of that radical sign in the denominator. Once I have this equation set up, then I just multiply the numbers in my numerator and the numbers in my denominator. So I end up with six times the square root of three over the square root of nine. And I know if I take the square root of nine, that's gonna equal three. So my fraction becomes six times the square root of three over three. But I can see I have a six in the front of my radical sign and I have a three in the denominator and I can reduce that fraction. Six divided by three is two. So my equation then simplifies to two times the square root of three. I take that value and put it into my X column, my 30 degree column. Once I have that, then I know in order for me to find my hypotenuse, I just need to double it. 2 times the square root of 3, 2 times 2 times the square root of 3, <laughs> I'll be multiplying the two twos together to give me the 4. So I'll be 4 times the square root of 3. And we found our side measurements when our long uh, side of my triangle for is 6. I know what my short side is. I know what my hypotenuse is at this point. So this is going to be the most difficult part that you'll have to deal with is when you have um, when you're trying to rationalize the denominator, trying to get that square root out of the denominator. Here I have a couple uh, charts that I set up um, where I gave you some information. In the first line, I gave you the short side. In the second line, I gave you the hypotenuse. And in the third line, I gave you the long side. What I'd like you to do is take a minute, pause the recording, or um, you know, if you're on your, if you're just watching the PowerPoint, uh, just don't advance to the next screen. See if you can fill those numbers in because I do have the information or your answers for the next uh, on the next couple slides. Hopefully, you did take the time to go through and try to fill out fill out the chart. Um, you can see here in row one, this is going to be the easiest one you have so far because you have your value of X, which is two. And then for your um, 60 degree column and your hypotenuse column, you're just plugging in wherever you see an X, you're substituting in that number two. So there is no arithmetic really that has to be done. Okay. Well, maybe except for the hypotenuse because we had to say two times two, <laughs> but I think that that, you know, you don't necessarily need a calculator for that. For the next line, we were looking to see when we were given the hypotenuse of eight. In this particular case, when we had the hypotenuse is eight, we had to divide um, the equation. We had two X equal eight. We had to divide both sides by two to find our value of X. So we found our value of X to be four. Eight divided by two will give you four. And then once I had my X value, which is in red, then I just substituted that X value into that formula and it became four times the square root of three. Last one, last line, where the line, uh, our long side is nine, okay? What we need to do is we need to put that equation into, a, a, a set up an equation. So what we did is we said x times the square root of three equals nine. Then we had to divide both sides by nine in order to eliminate or to solve for x. Once we did that, we had to rationalize the denominator. This gave us our value for X. Once we had our value for X, we just double it to get our value for the hypotenuse. Now we're going to take a look at the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Again, it's another right triangle. And this is what you would call an isosceles triangle. You have two angles that are the same measurement with uh, your right angle. So they're both 45 degree angles. The two sides will be the same. 
So we're going to call them legs. We don't have a short side or a long side because the two have the exact same length. So we just really will refer to it as a leg or the hypotenuse. Again, the hypotenuse will be the longest side and it's the opposite of your 90 degree angle. Again, we're going to have a formula that we're setting up for this particular uh, triangle. We're going to say that we're going to say our value of our leg is going to equal x or I should say the relationship. There's a relationship between the sides. If our, if our leg has a value of x, then we know that our hypotenuse is going to be x times the square root of 2. Again, I set up an example. If, you're, if we said you know, that 7 was our, the side length of our legs, then we would just substitute in that 7 in our formula for the hypotenuse, and it would just be 7 times the square root of 2. Again, I'm going to set up the chart just like we did in the 30, 60, 90 degree. You can see I have two legs and the hypotenuse. Okay, But if you look at this, you'll see that the first two columns, they're both red, and they both have the exact same information. So as we're setting up our, uh, our chart here, we really don't need to have two columns for the red because we know that they're, they're both the same. Okay, So what we can do is we can eliminate the one column. In this particular case, I substituted in the value of 7 in for our leg of the, the um, triangle, our isosceles triangle. And then I know all I need to do at this point is substitute that 7 in where the x is in the uh, formula for my hypotenuse. Again, I didn't have to do any arithmetic. It was just kind of a, I like to call it a plug and play. Once they give you the leg, you could just substitute it in um, for the formula for the hypotenuse, and we know it's 7 times the square root of 2. Again, keeping the radical sign, we do not put it into our calculator. Now, in this particular case, where this is going to be a little bit different, okay? I'm giving you the hypotenuse. But if you notice, if the hypotenuse there, it has 12 times the square root of 10. So far, we've been dealing with the square root of 2 or even square, dealing with the square root of 3. Uh, depending on which one we're looking at, okay? Don't worry, it's okay, we can still handle this, okay? This is going to be something where we're going to have to rationalize a denominator. So we're going to set up our chart like we have done before. We're going to substitute in, or we're, I should say we're going to fill in our chart where we're going to put in our uh, the information we know. In this particular case, we know the hypotenuse. And we're going to set up our formula. Our formula is sitting, written right there as x times the square root of 2. And we're going to set that into the value, what they told us that the, the measurement is. The measurement is 12 times the square root of 10. So you can see I set up an equation. x times the square root of 2 equal 12 times the uh, 12 times square root of 10. Okay, now our goal is to solve for x. Okay. To solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by the square root of 2 looks pretty straightforward. And I know that I have a square root of 2 in my numerator, a square root of 2 in my denominator. They cancel each other out, and I'm just left with my value of x. Now when we look at the right side of our equation, what we're going to do is we're going to take those radical signs. I have the square root of 10 in my numerator, and I have the square root of 2 in my denominator. And I'm really going to say, wait a minute, let's bring that inside the radical sign. So I, have my, I, I actually kind of condensed my fraction. So I have 10 over 2 inside my radical sign. So now my equation becomes 12 times the square root of 10 over 2. But as you can see, I can reduce 10 over 2. 10 is an even number. I'm dividing it by 2, so I can reduce that number. And by reducing that number, I truly eliminate a fraction. It's a nice little bonus. The other thing, too, it makes it much easier to work with, as you can see there. So 10 divided by 2 will give me 5. So my fraction has reduced, or my problem has reduced to 12 times the square root of, square root of 5. So that's going to be my value for x. And I found the, the length of my side of my triangle. So my legs are 12 times the square root of 5, and my hypotenuse is 12 times the square root of 10. Again, I gave, set up a couple problems for you. What I'd like to do once again is to either pause the video or don't advance the PowerPoint. And let's see if you can come up with the values for these particular numbers.
try and solve for where you see the black question marks. Hopefully you were successful. Um, again, the first line is pretty straightforward. This is my plug and play. I gave you the side length of five for, um, for my leg in the triangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna plug it right into my formula for the hypotenuse. Um, my value of, of, of x was five. I'm going to plug it in there. So I'll have five times the square root of two. And I'm finished. I have my two legs and I have my hypotenuse. Pretty simple. For the next equation, I have three times the square root of two is going to be my leg. And what I need to do is I need to multiply that times the square root of two in order to find my hypotenuse. Well, when I multiply them together, I end up with three times the square root of four because the square root of two times the square root of two. I multiply those twos together. They're kind of the same format. That'll give me the square root of four. But then the square root of 4 is a perfect square, so I can take the square root of 4 to get 2. So don't forget I have that 3 there, so it's 3 times 2 will give me 6. So when my leg has a length of 3 times the square root of 2, I know that my hypotenuse will be 6. And for the last one, we had our hypotenuse as 4 times the square root of 6. Well, in this particular case, I need to set it equal to my formula. So x times the square root of 2 equals 4 times the square root of 6. I need to isolate the x, and I divide both sides by the square root of 2. So I'll have that my equation is x equals 4 times the square root of 6 divided by the square root of 2. But I'm going to do something similar like I did last time, where I have a fraction with the square root of 6 over the square root of 2. I'm going to put that all in my radical sign, so it really becomes a square root of 6 divided by 2. And 6 divided by 2, again, we have two even numbers. That'll make it the square root uh, I'm, uh, 6 divided by 2 will give you 3, so it'll be 4 times the square root of 3. That becomes my leg in the triangle since they gave me my hypotenuse. Hopefully you did well with that. One thing I do want to point out to you is, I mean, we have two different formulas here. We have the 30, 60, 90, and we have the 45, 45, 90 with our right triangles. You, and again, I can't stress enough to set up the chart. That's going to be the easiest way for you to, to figure out the different lengths. I know the different the lessons go through a couple of different things of you know how to solve it, but this has been the easiest and, and, and cleanest that I've seen, um, and students have been able to grasp it the best this way. Um, one thing, again, I want you to notice is, you know, both of them have a radical sign in there. One has a square root of 3, the other one has a square root of 2. And sometimes you get confused, like, oh, which one is which, especially when you're taking a test or maybe even our standardized test. And the easiest way for me, for me to tell you to remember is that with the 30, 60, 90, I have three different angle measurements and I have three different side lengths. So that's the one you're going to have the square root of 3 in your radical sign. When I have the 45, 45, 90, that's your isosceles triangle, where two sides are the equal measurement, and I only have two different angle measurements, so that's where I have my square root of 2. I hope you can see, see what I'm trying to point out. Three angles, that's going to be your square root of 3. Two angles, you have the square root of 2. So hopefully that's an easy way to remember which formula goes which, with which triangle. Okay, that is the end of our review over the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90 triangles. Um, I hope this helps you with your assignments. Um, if you've already completed these assignments and you would like to do corrections, please let me know. Send me an email, um, you know, in uh, Odysseyware, uh, in Genius, depending on, you know, which platform you're in, and I can go back in and reassign them to you. I just want you to watch the, plat uh, the video first or watch the PowerPoint first. Um, so in your message, please say, Mrs. Houghton, I've watched the video. I would like to do corrections, and I will reassign everything back to you. Even if you've, uh, you know, um, maxed out your number of attempts, I will give it to you because you watched the video. If you have any questions, there are three different ways you can get a hold of me. You can get me you know, uh, through my email. Uh, you can come into the virtual office, or you can also call me on my phone. 
Uh, that number is a direct number to my desk. So if you have any questions, you'll be calling me directly. Um, any questions, please see me. Send me an email. I'm here for you. Hope this helped you out and have a great day. Thanks. Bye.